Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Suhini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So I've been doing more live streams in the you know past couple of weeks, but um, I recently changed my computer and it's a new deep learning machine that I have, which is uh, my, my earlier one was uh, System76, it was Ubuntu, but right now I am using a Windows uh, you know operating system, but it's an MSI laptop and I am really loving the experience. Uh, I really wanted to take this chance to make this video for anybody who is a newbie in AI and deep learning and machine learning, because this MSI laptop, it has you know, epic speed uh, of doing deep learning uh, computations. And uh, I'll show you uh, how to get started for anybody who's, you know, a newcomer into deep learning, getting a system and getting the system up and running with the actual library, such as, uh, you know, TensorFlow or PyTorch can be really challenging. So this video is dedicated to all of them who want to really, you know, start uh, their, their journey into machine learning and deep learning space. And I will be showing you how to do everything from scratch for getting a machine learning or a deep learning system started. So we will be using Anaconda. I will be showing you how to install Anaconda, how to get virtual environments, and in a virtual environment, how to get set up with TensorFlow, the latest TensorFlow, so that you can apply any of TF 2.0 and above, you know, so TensorFlow, you know, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, uh, and all of those packages in your system and see how the speed of it is different. So I will be showing you my, my latest system has, uh, you know, 3070. Uh, it's, it's RTX 3070 uh, NVIDIA graphics card. And I will be showing you the differences with respect to the System76 versus MSI so that you know which one you would like to purchase. And then I will show you how to really get started with your deep learning application. So if this is of interest to you, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. So here I wanted to show both uh, the, the systems, the deep learning systems that I've been using so far. So this is the new one. It is the MSI. And this is the System76 that I've been using so far. So if you see side by side, their dimensions are you know pretty similar. Um, the screen size and, and everything is, you know, looks pretty similar now. This is actually one of the issues that I've been facing with my System76 because of which I would not recommend it. Uh, but then, um, you know, MSI, again, it's, it's new. I'm going to create another whole unboxing video for, um, you know, the MSI computer so that you can see how, how to, you know, work with it for deep learning algorithms. Now, let's uh, look into the System76 for a minute. All right, so here is the System76 uh, computer that I've been using uh, for some time. And um, I, I wanted to show you some of the main issues that I was facing with it. Again, I have already, you know, booted it twice. So I've, I've wiped it, cleaned it. And again, it's been, uh, I've replaced parts for it, the, the GPU especially. So if I open the, the terminal and if I just type NVIDIA minus SMI, you see most of the times it'll complain that it could it has you know it's failed so in these cases i literally have to restart it a couple of times in order for it to even uh, respond and the other thing is i'm not sure if you can see here um but the the it, it, it looks very granular So this is the, the desktop that I have of my new computer. So I will, I'm going to be showing you the steps that you need to do so that, you know, you can figure out and uh, you know, get your deep learning uh, system, again, you know, started on this computer. So first off, you have to go and install Anaconda. So let's see how to do that. So you would literally go to a new tab and just say install Anaconda Windows. And you will have your, you know, download the, the installer. You just go here and you just, you know, hit this. I've already done, my installation is already complete, so I'm not gonna redo this. I will mention that um, the reason why I, my current uh, you know, installation is in Windows is because my, uh, my Zoom, and my video processing uh, software, it is actually more compatible with uh, either, um, you know, iOS or Windows. So that's the reason why I've been keeping things at Windows, although Ubuntu gives you much more seamless industry-like experience for deep learning applications, but I'm going to be using uh, Windows. It, it has been a uh, quite a, you know, process for me to, uh, you know, 
transition to uh, Windows. But again, I'm doing it. And uh, if, if anybody needs help, I'm here to help you, you know, for deep learning applications on a Windows system. All right. Once Anaconda has been installed, you will be able to, if you just go and, and, and look at, uh, you know, Anaconda Navigator, you're going to get a navigator and you're going to get a prompt. Now, if you go to the navigator, you will see that all the different virtual environments will be listed in here. And this is the best way in which you can see what are all of the libraries that are, you know, already installed so that if you want to modify anything, you can actually go ahead and do that. So here you will see the application. So this is the base uh, environment. And then these are the three, you know, virtual environments that I've already created. And if you need Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab, everything else, you will see that, you know, it's, it's in here. Now, the one that I am going to be using much, you know, a, a lot, uh, which has TensorFlow in it is actually this one. Right. And if you see in here, I already have, you know, the basic requirements that includes uh, my Jupyter Notebook. And I don't have Jupyter Lab. I, I do use Jupyter Notebook. So what I'm going to be showing you is how to generate this, um, you know, virtual environment, and how to also use Jupyter Notebook for a virtual environment. So that then you will be able to, you know, op you know, launch a Jupyter Notebook and use, uh, you know, TensorFlow. So I'll show you how a TensorFlow, uh, you know, sample code also works. So. I'm going to be showing you everything from scratch on installation to working a TensorFlow 2.0 uh, and up, um, you know, library. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing you do is you launch your Anaconda work shell. So this is your, your prompt to get started. And all the commands I'm actually going to be listing in the description box below. So if you need, uh, please go ahead and, uh, you know, launch that. So first off, I'm going to be creating a new, uh, you know, virtual environment. Let me call that auto TF1. All right. So let's just go ahead and do that in the command prompt. You say yes. And it is now already created. Now I'm going to be activating. So on the activate auto TF1. All right. So it has been. So as soon as you see the virtual environment is created, you will see the virtual environment name on this on the side. So let me place these on two different uh, sites so that uh, I can you know launch them one by one. So then the, the next thing I need to uh, install is the IPython kernel. Now, this is useful so that whenever you are using a Jupyter notebook, it will by default be using the, uh, you know, your, your base environment. But if you are creating a new environment, you need to be able to create an IPython kernel on which it is going to be running. So if there is TensorFlow, if you have PyTorch, if you have, you know, TensorFlow 1.0, these should all be separate IPython kernels that you should be able to export. So that's the reason why I got IPython kernel. And then uh, let me get some, you know, basic libraries like NumPy, um, you know, scikit-learn, sklearn, and sklearn image, because I do a lot of image processing. Um, I'm going to be, you know, installing sklearn image as well, so scikit image as well. So these are just a few, uh, you know, basic uh, libraries, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, install each and every one of them. All right, so scikit-learn and SK images is done. Now, we need, if we if we just do a you know install a TensorFlow, it may not work with your current version of your uh, you know NVIDIA. So I in in order to check if you have CUDA, the the basic uh, command is NVIDIA minus SMI. Right? If you do this, it will show you that this is the version. So you have I have CUDA eleven point four, which is you know installed in, into my system, but in order for, for me to know what is the latest version of TensorFlow, which is compatible with this particular CUDA driver, that's the reason why I'm going to show you the, the process of, of going about checking all of the recent versions of TensorFlow. Because if I just give you the command that I used for this particular version in a few years, you know, TensorFlow is going to give, you know, new newer versions and CUDA is going to come up with come up with newer versions. So that's the reason why it may again be incompatible. But if I show you how to search for the right version of TensorFlow, you can actually keep it current, 
right? And uh, the older way was to install CUDNN, you know, from the NVIDIA's, um, you know, library. But Anaconda is able to do all of this by itself. So you literally do not have to install CUDNN again. But if you get the right version of TensorFlow GPU, it will do it will do that. It will install CUDNN for you. So if you if you find the right version of TensorFlow, you essentially struck gold. You don't really need to do anything else, right? That's why I do Conda Search TensorFlow. And what this is going to do is it's going to find all of the different packages that Anaconda has, right? And now you see these are the TensorFlow 1, 1.0 versions, and then there are the TensorFlow 2 uh, versions that you have. And now I all I need to do is figure out which version do I really need. So in this case, what I do is I go with TensorFlow 2.5 because with CUDA 11, 2.5 TensorFlow 2.5 version is actually uh, you know most compatible. But even with 2.5, you will see that there are a lot of different versions. There's MKL packages and then there are GPU packages. So the best thing to do is to try all of them. And only one of them will be successful in giving you the CUDNN, which is the default version. So for me, what I checked was uh, the, the for TensorFlow 2.5, the GPU PY39. So if I see here, here, the GPU, you know, this one, uh, PY39, this was the most accurate version for me to install. So that's what I go, I will go about doing. So if I just copy this command and I'm gonna paste it here. So what this is going to do is I don't need to install CUDNN separately, but because it's a channel within CUDNN, it is automatically going to you know, recognize what is the version of, uh, of CUDNN that I need. And it's gonna install from there, right? So what I'm doing right now is I'm making sure that the right version of CUDNN along with uh, you know, your TensorFlow GPU, everything is downloaded correctly. So you see that uh, as soon as this is done, it's gonna say that it's done. Now, in order for you to, you know, see check that it, it is correct, you have, you know, the, the correct version of TensorFlow or not, there's a good test where you just go do Python and inside Python, I just uh, do import TensorFlow as DF. Sorry. And if it is a correct one, you know, if, if, if it has been correctly identified, then you will see that it's gonna open uh, a CUDLL file because this is gonna say that CUDNN is working correctly, right? And then this is the command that you will uh, type in order to check, is GPU available? So it is gonna check, is GPU av available or not? And in the end, it's gonna print true. If this says this, that means it is successfully working, right? And now all I am gonna do is hit exit and I'm out of this, right? And finally, now this, this new uh, environment that I have, I need to make sure that this new environment is available through Jupyter Notebook, right? So that's the reason why I will have to export this auto TF1 as a new IPython kernel. So now this is done. So uh, if I now, Okay, so it has, I have to now install, you know, Jupyter Notebook. So now in order to do that, I can actually go to Anaconda Navigator. And in the Navigator, you will see that uh, in this, uh, you know, Auto TF1 now becomes a new, uh, it, it is a new environment. And in that environment, now I can easily just activate Jupyter Notebook. Um, that's gonna be the easiest version. So now you see there's Auto TF1. And here you see there is Jupyter Notebook, says Jupyter Lab and everything else. So here in Auto TF1, if I just go and if I just say install Jupyter Notebook. So whatever else, if you want here, if it's spider or if, you know any, any other command prompt, you can literally just go in here and install from here. So this is one way of doing it through a UI. And then of course you can do this uh, process through the command prompt as well. All right. So this is done. Now, if I just type Jupyter Notebook, it opens up Jupyter Notebook for me, right? So now let me just, you know, run a sample uh, command for you, a sample, you know, code for you so that you'll be able to see how, you know, this works. So I have this uh, sample code and uh, let's just run it, right? 
But here, as soon as this code opens, you will you will see that you know you have to change the basic kernel. So if I do change kernel, and here if I see auto tf1, so auto tf1 has now been uh, you know selected. And now let me just go ahead. And what I wanted to to, to show you here is this is actually a, a deep a nested unit. So it, it's with deep supervision vision. So it has a, about nine million parameters, um, you know, at the end of it. So it's a lot. It's it's a significantly large network. So I'm just gonna show you the speed at which it operates, right? So that you'll get an idea as to you know how this this is working. So let me use batches of five images each, and here I have called the compiler, and what I'm running it through is so five images are being used for generating data augmentations, and then after that there are 15 steps per epoch and about 60 epochs. So um, it just takes some time to initialize, and then you will see that the speed it it, it runs is actually pretty fast. So you see. Uh, and I have timed it with regards to the Colab GPU as well. Um, and this is way faster. So this is how you will see that the outputs, um, you know, are, are, are working pretty well. So I will also run the next one to show you the, the loss. But this experiment is just to show you the speed at which the operation is happening. If I looked at the task manager here, fine. So you see Python here. Um, and again, it is it is using you know, Python is you know, using your, your, your GPU. So this essentially shows us that um, this is a pretty fast system. And uh, again, it is, be, it is able to you know, deal with very high amount of computations in a short amount of time. So I would highly recommend uh, you know, using the, the GTX 3070 for, uh, for any, in any format that, that people have uh, over the 2070 for sure. Uh, in order to get to your deep learning application. So I hope this one was helpful for you. And, uh, you know, next time we will get back to more semantic segmentation uh, examples. So thanks all for joining. See you next time.